YouTube, Red Viking Trucker. Listen, on this video, I'm not doing any edits. I'm going to do just a straight filming because it's a pretty serious matter. At least I think it is. And this isn't uh, speaking ill of anybody. I'm just bringing up what they themselves have spoken of now. And just the, the cautionary tale this becomes for all the new truckers that are out there and also the experienced truckers that are out there. Because when I heard this the other night, my jaw hit the floor. When I heard the, uh, what one of these guys said. And again, this is not jamming on them just to be kicking them in the head. This is bringing up among us as truckers what we need to tell each other. Okay? If you've followed any other channels on YouTube, you probably know that Little Guy Trucker is leaving trucking. Sounds like he's uh, left his truck somewhere. And Little Dog Trucker, and he have been going back and forth. And I only mention their names because they've been very open about all of this that I'm about to share with you. But there's a, there's a critical point. You know, some people lost their minds because... Uh, Little Dog set up some kind of a, a campaign to help Little Guy out when Little Guy's new truck broke down. And that's, that's none of my business. So if you've donated to Little, little Guy Trucker and you feel put together, well, it probably, probably is a cautionary tale there too. Um, the most important takeaway for me in all of this, because again, in my 15 months out here, and I was very cautious sharing my company that I work for, when I first came in the business. And even when I did share the, that, the company, who all you guys know is GP Truck, when I did share them, initially I had people call me because I told people, listen, I came out here and I ran. I ran my face off. I still do run my face off, which is why I'm doing well. I still do run my face off. I've only seen one guy have steady success of all these truckers I've seen going to the lease operation side. But let me get back, and I'll bring him up in a minute, but let me get back to Little Dog Trucker and uh, Little Guy Trucker. You know, they went with Travel Loco back in January, I believe, and it's a company I'd never heard of until they went with them. I think it was like 88% of the uh, the gross to the truck if you got a trailer and a new tractor from, uh, from the company or through the company or however they worked it out. And 88% sounds like a huge amount. It sounds like it's a huge upside. But then when all this falling out happened, and I understand little guy trucker having some issues with this truck, you would never expect to have those kind of issues with the brand new truck. But put aside the money that people sent him to help him and his family. Put that aside, because I think little dog, I do believe he did that out of the kindness and graciousness of his heart. But this, this business is all about math. It's all about metrics. It's all about tracking your expenses. It's all about running your face off or running the right loads that you don't have to run your face off that much. But you don't get a you don't lease a truck and then start just making money magically. And to hear, because again, I know I've seen videos where Little Dog has shown his checks from Travel Loco. And they, you know, again, we all make referral bonuses of people coming in. My company, I get paid zero for a brand new driver. If it's a brand new driver out of out of CDL school, I don't get paid a penny. And if it's a senior driver, uh, more than a year experience, I get paid $750. But even then, when I speak to these drivers, if they call me, I tell them, listen, here's the reality. And I tell them the good and bad with my company. Um, because no company is perfect. But you would think at 88%, the average trucker would think, man, that's, that's great. And again, they were doing reefer, which should be the better paying loads, regardless of the coast you're on. Because you do have year-round people you know, needing food. And if they were behind on their trucks payment, everything they've been talking about, about Travel Loco has been BS. Not saying Travel Loco is BS. I'm saying them recruiting people to go to Travel Loco has been BS. That is one of the reasons I am so cautious. You know, I spoke to one of the drivers that came on board with my company. He was a brand new driver um, in my area. He came on board and I don't, you know, I don't get paid a penny off them, but he said he's having a real tough time getting his miles. My question immediately was, and if you're watching this, I'm sorry that you're going to hear it here, but my, my first question was, how many days a week are you running? Because when I came in the business, if I wasn't getting 3,000 miles by running six days a week, 
I stayed off my clock and ran the seventh day. And I always asked. And if I wasn't close to what I needed to have on miles by Thursday afternoon, I would call the company and say, what do you have going to Texas? Because a lot of the guys want to be home on Saturdays and Sundays. What do you have going to Texas? And I'd go down to Texas and reset because I knew I'd get a 12 to 1600 mile run, whether I went to Laredo or El Paso, just one way. That's how I handled my first year in the business. And I'm coming up on my 16th month and I still run my face off. I'm averaging 480 to 520 per night, running all nights. I'm doing what most people don't want to do. Doesn't make me anything special. But you know what? To be out repping the companies where people are leaving their current company, leaving their current job, coming with your company, and you've been behind on truck payments, doesn't matter what the reason is. Trust me when I tell you this. It doesn't matter what the reason is. What matters to me as a trucker is when I speak to another trucker about the good and bad of any company, especially my own, I try to be very specific. Because if you've watched my channel, if you're listening to a recruiter and you're believing a recruiter who's never driven a truck, what they tell you, that's your first mistake. Any company, including mine, it's your first mistake. The people you need to speak with are drivers. It's one of the reasons I got so skittish on this business when I was coming into it because everything was hide the monkey. Every recruiter I talked to, you know, they had bright, shiny things they would talk about. And I didn't know what detention pay was. I mean, I knew what it was, but I didn't know how it really truly worked. Detention pay, breakdown pay, safety pay, fuel bonus pay, all that stuff. I don't know how, I didn't know how all that worked. I didn't know what kind of caveats they would have in place and what kind of hooks they would have to not have to pay if you if you hit it. That's why even when my company recently changed their pay plan and took the guarantees away, I thought about it for about two days and I did a video about it telling people, listen, the, video, the, the, the guarantees went away if you're coming with GP truck. The guarantees went away. Good, bad, or indifferent, I never used the guarantees anyway. And I've still done better than the average money I was told I would ever make in the business up to the two, three, four year point. I've done better every single month, every single quarter. My story's never changed. Stay off your clock. Don't ride your clock chasing detention pay, chasing all the other safety bonus, everything else. If you do your, your job right and you run your face off and stay off your clock, I think you'll, and you find the right company, number three. Let's put number three to number one. You got to find the right company. I still hear drivers coming out here starting, they paid their own way and they're starting out at 32, 34 cents a mile. Why would you do that other than you didn't do your research? 88% of the load grows to the truck and they still were behind on payments. Think about that. I don't know how many miles they were running. I don't know which loads they chose not to run to be home with their family and all of a sudden a week gets by and you're caught. I don't know. I know this. I would hate to be one of those people they referred into the company watching that video that Little Dog did two nights ago talking about how he was behind on his payments. Little little guy trucker was behind on his payments. This isn't a bashing on anybody. This is a matter of all of us when we speak to each other. Tell the truth about it, man. But I tell you, man, if we can't trust each other, especially with all the smoke and mirrors we hear from everybody out here that's not a driver, that's part of every company, we're in sad shape. We're in sad shape. And if you call me tomorrow and ask me about my company, I'm going to tell you, you got to come in to the company and run your face off and chase 3,000 miles a week. So I'm going to tell you, it's never going to change. That first year of getting your experience, and if you're not going to do that, then you can't expect to make above average income. And for those of you that are thinking about the lease operator side, I would go to Jeffrey Like's channel to the about. I would contact Jeffrey Like and ask him if you could bend his ear. Because he's, he's the only person I've seen on YouTube doing it correctly. That's my rant. i got to shut down. It's Sunday morning. Back and forth to Charleston today. And I'm going to shut down. I'll get this video up. That's all I've got. If you like the videos, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. None of us are getting out of here live. Red Viking Trucker and my Beagle are out.